Mary Henderson Uloho, U-L-O-H-O. How y'all doing, my brother? Assalamu alaikum, my little brother. Thank you. How y'all doing today? All right. You ladies go through a lot, more than what anybody could ever imagine. And y'all do it with a lot of courage. Now, all of you, you're beautiful. And I need you to feel good about yourselves. We're going to start in this corner here. And I want you to just introduce yourself and tell me something good about you. Well, my name is Teresa. And um, something good about me. Um, I'm a good mother. Beautiful. Come on with it. Give me some of you. Give me some of you. My name is Yasmeek Washington. I've been in the pimping and hoeing game since I was 14. Well, give me your good. Give well, me your good. I'm you loving, know? I'm caring. I'm very loyal until you cross me. OK. Talk to me back there. Share it with me. Hi, my name is Tawanda. I'm a beautiful black African-American female. I'm loving, Could you kind. say that one more time? I'm a beautiful black African-American woman. I love that. I have a passion for people. I have five kids. And um, at the age 12, I was told I wasn't going to be shit, mountain nothing. Come on. Or none of that. OK. OK. We're good. All right. Now, ladies, let me share something with you. There was a time in my life when I didn't feel there was any good in me at all. And the reason for that is because I was sitting on that side where you guys are today, not so long ago. So during my many days behind bars, I had to go inside myself and find something good about me because I felt like trash. When I got out of prison, I had nowhere to go. I could not rent an apartment because I was a felon. You can't get a job. You can't get a bank account. You can't get a credit card. You're not allowing me to have the tools that I need to sustain myself out here in society. And as a woman, I had to think about my safety in a way that a man wouldn't have to. I didn't know what to do. I was alone. I was scared. I had no one. I knew there were women that was coming home from prison that was in the same boat that I was in. Good morning, ladies. Good morning, everybody. Time to wake up. They didn't have a place to stay. Did sleep last they night? didn't feel safe. They couldn't make money. Really? They felt like Can I felt. And that's when I realized this is a real big problem. And that's where Sister Hearts really started. Let me see your face. Good morning. OK, look, let's, everybody, let's start helping set the table. OK, we need some plates. I'm, I'm, I'm let you I got it. <laughs> she was so I happy. Know. That was really interesting. It's a blessing to be out here. Mm -hmm. So you know we have a uh, reunion this weekend. She going to be okay. here. You going to be here, right? She don't have a choice. You coming back. If not, I'm coming to get you. <laughs> she probably heard about it.
Sister Hearts is a thrift store and a temporary housing facility specifically for ex-offenders to transition back into society. It may only take a week, it may just take a month or up to a year, but I'm gonna make sure that you have a place to stay and a job. It's not just the physical incarceration that causes damage. It takes time to adjust back to society because a lot of us have been away for a long time. When I got out of prison, I needed to be rehabilitated. I needed help. You see, in prison, you're broken, mentally, emotionally, and physically. That's what prison does. It breaks people. I was brutalized, and I saw so much suffering. I used to close my eyes, and I would always see myself in nature. I would see the trees all around me, feel the sun shining on my face. I would hear the wind as it ruffled the leaves in the trees. And I would always think what it would feel like if I could just leave this place. Thirteen years out of my life, I spent behind bars. And over half that time, I spent in solitary. They used shame to keep my mind caged. They said I wasn't going to be nothing. I wasn't nothing. I wasn't shit, OK? As an ex-offender myself, I'm here to prove no matter what you're going through, you are going to all rise above it. Sister Hearts, how can I help you? This is Mary speaking. OK, well, first, we're located at 7519 West Judge Perez in Araby. This all started when I was homeless, living as a squatter, selling junk out of a suitcase from street corner to street corner as a means to survive. No one regarded me as even a person. Just take this, and you're going to clean that off. And then let's just start going through some of there. As ex-offenders, we are a group of people that have been discarded by society. Oh, you examine. Yeah, they're nice. So we relate to those discarded items. We relate to that trash. Teresa, how much you think these should be? Those right there, they're a little worn, but they still have a little more wearing to go. Four dollars. That would be straight with the four dollars. No more, no less. So give me an idea on these four. On those four, if I was to do all four of those, I probably would uh. 12 bucks. 12? Yep. Oh, yeah, $3 smart. each. That is smart. Who is the 92ers? I have no idea. All right. Maybe you should Google it. Oh, yeah. Google 1992 caps. Here's what I found on the web for 1992 caps. I don't think I did that right. OK, who got a better Google than me? I do, but okay. mine doesn't talk. That's all you think about all day is the backside. In prison, you're told what to do almost 24 hours a day. When your brain is under that type of discipline year after year, you lose the ability to think on your own. So we have created an environment to teach people how to think again. 
I pick a section of the store that's cluttered and they completely reorganize that section by themselves. And they also set the prices. The shorts is two nine and nine and up. The highest is gonna be is like five dollars, okay? So you don't never Now they're starting to learn the dynamics of customer service. If you don't get it, I'm gonna get it. And it works. It really works because you start to think about your own value. And as ex-offenders, we need that. You need help, ma'am? The table? You want to know how much it costs? They have purpose. They're part of something. They can redefine who they are as an ex offender. <laughs> and I'm not down here to put you down, to look down on you, to talk down on. I ain't here for none of that. What I'm doing is trying to make a way for you out there so when you do get out there and you say, I want a better life, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do this, all y'all got to remember is Sister Hearts. Sister Hearts. Y'all need each other, y'all call up on each other. You're not alone. You don't have to fight this battle by yourself no more. Y'all got help. We here. We don't let nobody break this bond in this circle. This is what's called one love. Y'all get it? Yes. All right. Sister Hearts for Life. Sister Hearts for Life. Sister Hearts for Life. When I was in prison, I met a lot of wonderful women. Those women was with me when I was lonely when I was hurting, when I was frustrated. Those women gave me comfort. And I call those women my sister hearts. I was sentenced to two and a half years for a marijuana charge. When you go back into society, you have to start all over again. So many things has changed, you have to catch up with the time. My son and my daughter, they was like five and seven, and when I come home, they was like 24, 27 years old. It was scary learning how to adjust back out in society, but I haven't been in no other kind of trouble at all. I was incarcerated for 25 years. Nothing takes the actual pain away from doing the time. It hurts. It really hurts. It's, it's, it messes you up. It's still hard. I'm still struggling, but I'm free. We're not depending on society to rehabilitate us. We have taken the reins to rehabilitate ourselves. We came from death, which was prison, to life. And that's what Sister Heart is for me. It's life. What I want to do with my life is to help other ex-offenders really live. I want them to feel how wonderful they are. I want them to know they matter. Just because they've committed a crime, they're no less of a human being. They can regain their dignity. They can be successful after incarceration. <laughs>